Welcome to this uh, tutorial on uh, RT, which will deal with uh, using multiple probabilistic models uh, together with reliability analysis. In this example, I'm going to start with two predefined input files that you will find online. <clears throat> one is called a multi-model example, and the other one is a structural model that would enter into this, uh, this example. I'm going to start by loading the multi-model uh, example file uh, by drag and drop. You could also open that by going to File Open. What I'm going to do next now is to look at the uh, domain and focus first uh, not at the random variables uh, or some of the other parameters like the responses which I will return to but first on to the locations. So there are a number of locations that are defined and that's going to be the starting point for this uh, tutorial. I'm going to view the map so that you see where these locations are on the map. The two first uh, locations that I'm going to show you on the map are going to uh, be the endpoints of an earthquake fault. So here's the uh, map of the um, Pacific Northwest and I'm going to start with the fault line 1 uh, location, the fault line 2. So those are going to be the two endpoints on earthquake fault line. I'm also going to show you some of the building locations. I have three buildings in this multi-model uh, example and they are located in um, Victoria in, in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. What I'm going to do next is to look at the models. Um, first I'm going to have a location model that's going to um, generate locations of um, hypocenters along this earthquake fault. There are input parameters, for example the two locations that I just uh, showed on the map and other parameters that are defined as random variables up in the parameter list. Then I'm going to look at the magnitude model, same thing, that is a model that will generate magnitude realizations given a number of input parameters. Again, uh, most of them are being random variables further up in the uh, object pane. Then I'm going to the intensity model and uh, that takes uh, the three building locations and a number of other input parameters and that will generate intensity values at the locations where these buildings are located. That leads me to going to the uh, responses where I want to show you the generic responses. These are for the most part auto-generated by the models below. For example the intensity model generates these three uh, responses 1, 2 and 3, namely the uh, intensity at the three building locations that have been given to that model. Further, I'm going down to the ST model, that is a structural model. ST, as you may know, is the structural analysis uh, software that is posted together with RT on our website. And it takes as input file this, um, this file that I have on my, um, on my computer disk. I keep that file in the same folder as the other one, in fact on the desktop in this situation, um, which is a convenient way to have them uh, run together. Let me also briefly mention that I have some uh, simple damage curves that models building number one and building number two, while building number three is this um, more uh, complex, more comprehensive structural model where the response, the displacement response from that is going into some uh, simple damage curve that will give me the damage as a function of that response. Without going in detail and also emphasizing that this example is not meant to be the realistic example, that is for later publications, but it's a demonstration of using multiple models together in one analysis. Having said that, I will point at the very last consequence model, namely the building repair cost for the three models. Look, please look at the um, model manual on the website of RT to see more details about all these different models. Let me uh, just say that the response from these cost models, let me see if I can find them in my response list up here. Here's the repair cost for number one and for number two. I also have a repair cost for building number three. And they all go into the function that I've specified. So here's my function, that is the sum in my expression here, is the sum of the cost, the repair cost for each building. So let me start now by um, doing an analysis. The first thing I like to do is to, when I start the analysis here is to go to function evaluation. I just want to evaluate the function, this function that I just showed you. Uh, I'm going to do it at the mean value of the random variables and I'm pressing OK. 
you will see on the map that a new location has been generated. This is, in fact, the mean location of the um, hypocenter of the earthquake. And you will see that the function value is 2.5 million. So that is the loss at the mean value of the random variables. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a sampling analysis. I am going to do a histogram type analysis uh, on exactly this function that um, I defined. You will see that the histogram is being formed here. Samples are count counting up to 100. So in this input file I only have 100 samples. It's very little. But the reason I didn't want to do more is that all these realizations are created as you will see here. If you see my cursor, you will see that they are created along the earthquake fault. So these are now the random realizations that occurred and when I do visualize them on the map the analysis goes fairly slow so that's why I stopped at 100. What I want to do now is to investigate uh, the tail probability a little further. I'm going out in this tail that is of course very inaccurate in this 100 sample histogram but I'm going to go in at uh, in fact here around uh, 50 million and I'm going to investigate what is the probability that this loss the total loss exceeds 50 million. I'm going to start by closing all the windows to let the analysis go a little faster. I'm going to then uh, start a form analysis. Well, before I do that, let me change the function to make it a proper limit state function, namely by asking what is the probability that the loss exceeds 5 million dollars, namely 5 to the uh, power 7, 5 times 10 to the power 7. And uh, that's my limit state function. <clears throat> I'm going to subject that to form analysis, but I want you to, uh, to look at something interesting happening here. I uh, have uh, predefined my analysis tools. I press enter, and you will see that this uh, form analysis does not converge. It goes out to a far distance. In fact, 16 you may see on the screen here is the distance uh, from the origin to the trial points, which is a large distance, and it didn't converge. This is something you will find if you are not careful when you select your step size in the search for the design point. Uh, instead of using the fixed step size, I'm going to use the Armijo step size selector. So let me go to my solver and change that. <clears throat> so here I'm switching to the Armijo, pressing enter and running the analysis again. And this time you will see the red from the red line here it converges to a reliability index of a little over 2. In fact, let me see here in the output window, a 2.17 um, is my reliability index. What I would like to do now is to verify that by importance sampling around the design point. So then I'm going to my analysis tools and the random number generator. And now I want to generate random numbers around the current value of the random variables, namely the design point that it just converged to right now and um, I go to analysis, uh, sampling and I change the accumulator to the failure probability accumulator and I press OK. You will see now that the uh, number of samples uh, increase in the output win window here. Um, you start counting up samples and uh, in the graph that's being displayed here is the coefficient of variation of the sampling result as it's uh, decreasing. I can speed this up a little bit by going to my failure probability accumulator and setting the output to minimum because in the output window it is uh, being printed the sampling number and you will find that this line here uh, starts going a little faster so the sampling um, is it's taking a little less time here and uh, I remind myself that the reliability index from form was 2.17 approximately so as soon as this analysis now has made it to um, uh, 0.05, the target coefficient uh, of variation that I'm looking at here, 5%, I can go down in my output window and look at the reliability, reliability index from this analysis, 2.09. So a slight correction compared to my form result. The last thing I want to do in this uh, tutorial is to look at the random variables and the interesting thing is that now we can rank them and see which was the most, ra most important random variable uh, in this analysis. So opening this branch here, ranking by the uh, gamma importance measure, and there you'll see which parameter is the most and which is the least important. Thank you.